Hello. In this video, I'm going to provide uh, an introduction and overview of organic synthesis. Um, <clears throat> depending on where you come into this video, you might have studied a little bit of organic chemistry. You might have studied a lot of organic chemistry. But I'm sort of aiming this video at students who uh, are maybe in their second semester of an under of a two course undergraduate sequence. Um, you know some reactions, but you don't know a lot of reactions. Um, Certainly, there's a lot that can be said about organic synthesis appropriate for, for all levels, and, and uh, I could just record hundreds of videos about this topic specifically, but um, I'm going to stick to some things that are appropriate for undergraduate study of organic chemistry. Um, organic, uh, to start off with, I want to just share with my idea of what I think organic synthesis is. Right? It's converting compounds with simpler structures into compounds with more complex structures and using organic chemical reactions. Often what we're doing is we, we have a desire to produce substances that have higher value than, than uh, other substances. Maybe we're looking at drugs that are more potent uh, with fewer side effects. Maybe we're looking at polymeric materials that have better physical properties or, or maybe are biodegradable where they weren't before or organic electronics that are uh, more robust and last longer. And then very often organic synthesis is actually inspired by nature. Either we're starting with some naturally occurring compound or trying to replicate some process or behavior observed in nature, or we're simply um, using reactions to, to do in the lab what we see uh, the natural world doing around us. I want to start with an early example of, of what I would consider organic synthesis in, in the light of what I just shared, uh, trying to figure out how to synthesize a specific compound uh, and to increase its value, as I described. Uh, in that case, that, that example I want to use is aspirin. Um, and the story of aspirin begins hundreds of years ago, actually, when uh, people figured out that chewing on willow bark gave them uh, or helped relieve their pain. In the 1800s, chemists isolated uh, the compound salicylin, or salicylin, I'm sorry, uh, which is a glucoside of 2-hydroxymethylphenol uh, or, or salicylol. Um, after some careful study, it was determined that that salicylin was hydrolyzed and oxidized in, in living organisms to salicylic acid, which is the active component. Uh, but sal and salicylic acid was easy to synthesize from uh, means it didn't involve extracting stuff out of large volumes of willow bark, thereby killing willow trees. Uh, but salicylic acid was not well tolerated by the stomach. It created uh, unpleasant side effects, stomach pain, and ulcers. And so... In the late 1800s, early 1900s, chemists at the Bayer Company in Germany discovered that by reacting salicylic acid with uh, acetyl chloride or acetic anhydride, they were able to make acetyl salicylic acid, which was tolerated by the stomach, and uh, then could go on and provide the beneficial benefits. And to this day, aspirin remains a really important pharmaceutical compound despite its, its humble and simple origins. Here is a more complex synthetic target, uh, oseltamivir, which is appropriate for the time I'm recording this video, which is in the middle of flu season. Oseltamivir is marketed as Tamiflu, uh, an antiviral drug specifically targeted at influenza. Um, oseltamivir is more complicated than aspirin. It has more functional groups, it has chirality centers, um, but Organic chemists have been in the business of trying to synthesize complex molecules for quite some time, uh, and numerous Nobel Prizes have gone to organic chemists who have tackled and, and beaten really complex structures, and oseltamivir is actually not that complex in the grand scheme of things, but depending on where you're coming into it, this may be one of the most complex structures you've seen to date. Before I share some information about the synthesis of Tamiflu or oseltamivir, uh, I want to go over some basic vocabulary. Um, first thing I want to share with you is that in a given synthesis, the compound that we start with 
is conveniently referred to as the starting compound or starting material. Um, and I'll talk about this particular starting material on the next slide. The thing we're trying to synthesize is the target material. And then the act of converting the starting material into the target material is called a transformation. I want to distinguish uh, a transformation from a synthesis our transformation is just representing the overall structural changes we desire to accomplish. The sequence of individual reactions that lead to, to the actual chemical changes, the intermediates that are formed in between, these are the synthesis. The synthesis is, is, is an actual sequence of reactions that lead us from the starting material to the target material or uh, in, in another way of saying it, achieve or accomplish the desired transformation. Okay. So here is, is that starting material for oseltamivir. This is called shikimic acid. And it, like uh, aspirin, comes from a plant source or, or it begins from a plant source. Shikimic acid, uh, which has some of the functional groups needed for oseltamivir, is extracted from star anise. And... Um, it makes up around 3 to 7% of the dry weight of star anise. Uh, it has, because star anise is expensive to harvest, and uh, you know, if something interrupts the star anise crop, or there's a, a it becomes, you know, it's also a food uh, or a spice. So people are looking for other ways to, to, uh, to get to shikimic acid. It can be extracted in smaller quantities from sweet gum trees or from some pines. The needles of some pine species, uh, and more recently, um, engineered E. coli uh, bacteria have been used to produce shikimic acid. But I, the majority of the world's source of shikimic acid is still from the star anise plant. Some sort of the major uh, accomplishment in the conversion of shikimic acid to uh, oseltamivir actually has to do with changing some functional groups, yes, but also fixing some stereo centers. So if you permit me to go back to, to this slide, you notice that the, configure, the relative configuration of two of the chirality centers is different in the target material than it is in the starting material. And practicing organic chemists change the relative stereochemistry in just the way that you learned how to do so when you studied the SN2 reaction. The SN2 reaction is one of the most powerful ways to swap the relative stereochemistry. And so rather than presenting the entire commercial synthesis of oseltamivir, I actually just want to highlight some of the SN2 steps. Uh, so shikimic acid it, it undergoes five steps, uh, and they're actually the five steps that I showed over on the vocabulary uh, slide undergoes five steps to prep it for the first SN2 reaction. Okay. The uh, OMS group, or the mesylate group, is an activated leaving group. And so when that first intermediate is treated with base, it deprotonates the alcohol, and the, alcohol, the alkoxide anion can be an internal nucleophile and do an SN2 reaction uh, right there inside the molecule. And the result is a three-membered ring ether called an epoxide. Uh, and most undergraduate course sequences spend like a whole chapter on epoxides. So if you haven't covered epoxides yet, hold on, they're coming. Uh, the most important reaction of epoxides are ring opening by nucleophiles following the SN2 reaction. And in the case of oseltamivir, because we want a nitrogen there at the bottom carbon of the ring, we use a nitrogen nucleophile, specifically uh, azide or N3 minus. Uh, and that's done in the presence of a weak acid like ammonium chloride. So you get the, the alcohol at the other position. However, this still has the, the stereochemistry of the original starting material preserved. We're not quite done yet. Oops, sorry. Uh, so the azide is reduced to an amine and the alcohol is converted into the mesylate and to get another internal SN2 reaction. There's a lot to that particular reaction, so I'm not showing its mechanism. But you get this three-membered ring amine called an aziridine. 
that likewise in the presence of nucleophiles and acid can undergo an SN2 type ring opening to get now something that looks like oseltamivir with the correct stereochemistry and with nitrogens in the correct position. And just two more steps are needed then to convert it into oseltamivir, which is the structure shown on uh, the bottom of the screen. In upcoming videos, I'm going to introduce uh, your, uh, in a concept that I call your synthesis toolbox, you know, a way to reorganize the reactions you're learning in a way that helps you solve synthesis problems. And then I'm going to walk through some common synthesis problems, starting at the very simple and building up to more complex. Uh, the likelihood that you encounter a synthesis as complex as that of oseltamivir in uh, your undergraduate course sequence is probably small, but by the end of your undergraduate course sequence, you could probably understand every reaction in this sequence, including those that I have chosen not to show. Um, so stay tuned for more on organic synthesis. Thank you for watching.